Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In this episode, we're going to show you how to collect paper wasp nests. These are the Polistes species, such as Metricus, Fuscatus, Dominula. We'll show you where to find nests like this. Also, how to heat treat these nests so that when you bring them back into your research lab or your hobby environment, you don't infest your research space with these. This is bark lice, also called book lice. It's a type of tiny, almost microscopic insect that feeds on molds, fungus, and dead insects. These are natural bugs from the outside environment that can often be found inside wasp nests that have gone defunct for the season. If they make it inside one of your habitats, they will infest it and they will reproduce very rapidly. So you want to make sure you're very aware of this issue and you know how to prevent an infestation of bark lice. So let's start with where to find your specimen nests at the end of the season. This is November 3rd, 2022 in upstate Indiana. We're at a local park where there's some structures that have awnings and eaves where there's always good specimen nests for Polistes species. As you can see up inside some of the eaves, some of the overhanging rafters, you're going to see multiple different nests in this video that were found in the wild where they were taken from this environment and brought back into our research lab. Polistes wasps love this type of wooden structure that's outdoors. There's a certain amount of space that's open to the environment and there's certain spaces that are enclosed and tucked away. In this particular location, there had been wasp activity in every single one of these dual rafter overhangs where the eaves are. So we just went one after the other and just collected most of them as we were there. Some of them had already been removed by Parks and Rec people most likely. We were able to collect several specimens there. All you need to collect these in the wild is a pry tool of some kind. We just use a simple pry tool that has a right angle on it and also a straight edge on it. And you can put that up into pretty much any crevice where you see the nest and remove it you have to be careful to just try to pull it gently so that the stalk or the pedestal that attaches it to the wood frame is able to be removed without damaging the nest. And you just drop it directly into your plastic containers. And the great thing about these containers is that the wasp nest will sometimes come down with either live wasps or live parasites or bark lice or book lice as they're sometimes called whatever beasties are in those nests or above the nest when you bring them down end up right in the container and you can contain those as well so you might get some specimens that are live wasps to overwinter if you're looking for that but just be ready for anything to fall out with that nest and that way it's already contained and you just put the cap on and you're good to go so once you collect your nest specimens it's very important that you make these safe to bring into your lab environment or your archival storage environment. So what I mean by that is you want to heat treat these just like you would any of the items you might put into a nest habitat to overwinter live wasps. You're going to want to take these former colonies that have now hatched out and died off for the season and put them directly into a toaster oven. This is a specific oven we use only for the wasp habitat items that we have to heat treat and that kind of thing. But it can really be any oven you have at home. As long as you heat treat your items, you'll be safe. Now I'm going to show you what will happen to a habitat if you don't heat treat it. Because in these raw from the field nests that have not been heat treated yet, I can almost guarantee you're going to find very tiny, almost microscopic mites called bark lice. And bark lice will infest a wasp cage or a wasp habitat in the lab research environment. So you want to kill those off through heat before you bring them in. And I'll show you what wasp bark lice looks like later. Um, it's pretty nasty when they take over a habitat. So basically, just take your nests. So get them spread out like this on a tray, you know, spread out pretty well so the heat can evenly get to each of them. And then you're going to put them into your oven and fire it up to at least 150 degrees. We like to do at least 175. 
and then you're set. Now we're going to take you inside a live wasp habitat. This habitat had become infested with book lice or bark lice. The reason they call them book lice sometimes is because it was not uncommon to find these in book collections, in museums, in libraries, because they will actually eat mold, fungus. In high humidity environments, they're attracted to wallpaper paste and, and book bindings, all kinds of stuff. So they will eat dead bugs. As you see here, they're eating some dead leftover mealworms that the wasps had dropped below the habitat feeding area. So the reason we let this particular infestation go is because we wanted to study them. So we got some imagery of them. We watched this infestation really take off. They, they absolutely reproduce super fast. The small white ones you see are the little nymphs, but they're the same insect as the adult larger grayish ones that you see. And these are so small, they look like dust or maybe tiny grains of ground pepper on the bottom of the cage, except they're moving around. And the further you go in with optics, the more you see uh, that these are a real problem. And so they were so small, they were a little difficult to photograph, but we got some decent imagery to give you an idea. And these things were just going to town in there underneath the bottom layer cardboard of the glass habitat. Now, we were very interested to see when we were studying this particular habitat, whether or not this infestation would try to come out of the habitat, out of, crawl out of the cage, in other words, into the room that the habitat was in. But we didn't see that. We never saw them attempt to come out of the environment of the cage. And the reason we believe this occurred is that everything they needed was in the habitat. It was relatively humid in there because of the live wasps and the food and the open water containers that the, that the wasps would drink from. There was plenty of food in here between the extra food that the wasps didn't eat, such as parts of mealworms and things, and the cardboard itself maybe even. They found plenty of food, so they were able to reproduce like crazy in here, yet they were, did not really have any need to leave this environment. So it was relatively contained, so we could study them carefully and relatively safely. So we let this one go for a number of weeks with this infestation active. We also wanted to find out if the wasps would feed on the bark lice. But we never did see any of these wasps actively hunting the bark lice for protein. So it did not appear to be anything interesting to them as far as a food source. We did see the wasp react to them sometimes and watch them and move. Clearly they were reacting to them, but they just didn't seem to want to eat them. We were hoping that the wasps might just eat them as protein and maintain it by themselves, but that never did happen. So ultimately we had to remove the wasp from this habitat and put him into a clean one uh, that had no issue with the bark lice. And where this bark lice infestation came from, we know that specifically it came from unheat treated old wasp nest that we had put inside the cage just for the wasps to have comfort items to climb around on. We didn't heat treat them. We knew that they had bark lice issues going in. We wanted to see what happened and sure enough this happened. So as you can see the Polistes dominula in this particular cage were right there with their heads hanging right next to the bark lice and they never did attempt to eat these which we found very interesting. We had assumed that they would actually turn them into a food source pretty readily but they never never showed any interest in eating these. We're not sure if that's just because in the wild they don't eat anything that little, or if it's just because they were well fed enough on mealworms that they just simply weren't hungry, so they didn't hunt little insects like this. Either way, just to see if this would happen again, uh, we took another habitat that had metricus wasp in it, Polistes metricus, and we introduced to that habitat unheat treated old wasp nests again along with some unheat treated tree bark, sticks, and things like that. And without checking whether or not they had an infestation in them of bark lice already. And right away, the same thing happened. Bark lice all over the place in a short period of time. So the bottom line here is, make sure you heat treat anything you bring into your research lab environment. Anything that's gonna have a habitat that has natural items from the outside world, 
you're going to want to control that very carefully or you're going to have some unwelcome roommates pretty quickly. The other important factor to bring up here is habitat maintenance. In the wild, with open comb species like polistes, all the waste falls away from the nest. Nothing falls onto the nest because gravity pulls it away from the nest toward the ground. And so in an enclosed habitat like this, even after one or two feedings, you've got some dead mealworms that weren't finished by the wasps. It's up to you to clean that up because the wasps can't do it and it will just provide a huge food source for all of the parasites or bark lice or whatever else might infest the habitat. So if you're just vigilant about heat treating whatever you bring in and keeping your habitats as clean as possible, you'll never see this type of infestation. At least we never have in the habitats that we've controlled with heat treatments and with constant maintenance. It just simply doesn't happen. So be aware you're not going to run into this problem unless you fail on a couple of levels. So just keep your habitat squared away and you're good to go. That's it for today's video. We hope you had a good time watching this and you might have learned something too. Just a little shout out here to all our subscribers. We appreciate your support very much. The community on YouTube has been fantastic to us, supporting the channel, liking, subscribing, sharing, commenting, responding. It's been a pleasure to take part in this, so we appreciate that. We'll keep bringing you content so long as there's interest out there. Have a good one.